Hello and welcome to the GMBN Tech Show, where we're going to be kicking off today with an interview with Tracy Mosley. Nice. And we'll look at the new Rocky Mountain Insight, some power pedals from Look, and some Michelin tyres. Yeah. So I'm here with Tracy Mosley, one of the most decorated riders on the planet, probably, I would say. I mean, you're Thank a you. downhill world champion, enduro world champion twice. Uh, is it? Yeah, three times for enduro, but only once for downhill. Oh, yeah. okay. I do yeah. apologise. Twice overall downhill as well, yeah. I believe. Yeah. yeah, four cross British champs. Uh, a couple probably, of times. Yeah. <laughs> Somehow. Um, and how long do you think you've been racing for now? Oh, because well, I know you started in the nineties. Is I'm that right? Sad to think it's probably going to be it's thirty, 30 years. Thirty years, yeah. Because I was probably fifteen and I'm <laughs> yeah forty five this year. So yes, yeah. Oh my goodness, I've been saying twenty plus, but now actually I think I need to start another <laughs> another decade. Yeah, it's going to be thirty plus years. That's good because our love it, our viewers absolutely love a rewind, like some retro bikes. So can we talk retro bikes a bit? <laughs> we can you, try. I yes. think you started in the nineties. I yep. think your first sponsorship was Cannondale, is that right? Yep, that was. What were you racing back then? Um my first actual bike that I got was a Trek nine fifty, I know that which is a little basic oh, really? hardtail mm. uh, with a little suspension fork at the time. So but I think when I actually first raced I was on that Trek nine fifty and then I got picked up by Cannondale in the, as a junior, and I was riding one of the um, little head shock oh, suspensions. Oh, wow. So actually, I think it would have been a cross-country bike, as you now know, it's a hardtail, with just that as my front suspension. And then they soon came out with their Super V, mm. um, and then I think it would have been 1988 or 99, their kind of, their downhill bike, which actually at the time was probably the first, yeah. like, proper downhill bike, let's say, because mm. really before then, we just rode the same bike that you would ride cross-country, uphill, downhill. That was just the mountain bike. Yeah. There wasn't really a dif differentiation between downhill and cross-country bikes. So, yeah, that would have been... It was. I remember everyone in the campsite, at one of the nationals, coming to see my bike, because it was like, wow, this is, the, this is a downhill bike. This is amazing. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm showing my age now. But, yeah, cool. that was pretty cool at the time. And then fast forward to sort of 2002, yeah. that was your first downhill World Cup win. Yeah. Uh, what were you on then? I think it was a Kona, Team Kona Volvo, was it? It then? was Kona Ford Focus, oh. was the team. Um, so I would be on a, oh goodness, you're going to get me now, a Stab <laughs> Deluxe, I'm guessing it probably been Stab Primo, one of those yeah. Stab bicycles that the, uh, yeah. the Konas were. So that would have, yeah, that was a big, heavy, I don't say they mind me saying that because they were, I think, yeah. all downhill bikes. I think they then. all were. Big, yeah. heavy downhill bike that really just did nothing but mm. plummeted down a hill and you could barely pedal it anywhere else. For sure. But yeah, it did the job down Fort William. Yeah. And then eight years later, 2010, first downhill world championship win then. And yep. that's you being with Trek. Yep. Which you've been with for since... Since, since 2009, I want to say. You might yeah. get on that one. <laughs> yeah, I think that's right. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so that was their session, basically. Yeah. The, the first kind of their foray back into downhill bikes since they did one years previous. And then I think 2009, they started the Trek... World Racing was the team that I was on then, and that's when they brought back that session mm. uh, back onto the market, and obviously it's grown ever since then. So, have you ridden the newer session? I haven't, no, to oh, be honest. Haven't. I have not been on a downhill bike almost since I retired from downhill in 2011, to be honest. Oh, I rode amazing. one very briefly um, at Fort William as a, one of those AB riders back in the 2016, maybe. Mm. Um, but no, I've not even ridden a 29 a downhill bike yet. Oh, wow. But interestingly, when you moved over to Enduro, you were one of the first on the 29ers, weren't you? Totally, yeah. That first ever uh, Enduro World Series race in 2013 in Punterella in Italy. I remember I had a brand new prototype 29 and I literally went straight from a 26 to 29. I'm just like, I'm going to go with this. <laughs> Why not? And I remember vividly coming back from the first day of practice and one of the uh, media guys was just like, oh my God, I can't believe you're going to ride a 29er. You must be crazy. And yeah. I had had such a good day on it. I was like, I just love this bike. And I never, ever did that transition. I always went straight from 26 and I've been a 29 fan ever since. I basically rode it as much as I could. And that year, the only races I rode a 27.5 was just races where I couldn't get tyres at the time that were aggressive mm. enough for some of the, mm. or let's say puncture proof enough for a lot of the terrain that we were riding. But I've not, yeah, I've ridden anything since. And I think that's probably why I haven't ridden my downhill bike is, or hadn't had a downhill bike, is I feel like the Enduro bikes have evolved so much since then, over the next 10 years, that unless I'm going to go to a downhill race, all the riding I actually kind of want to do now, I can do it on a mm. on a really 
cool trail bike that I can also pedal uphill and yeah. do a lot of stuff on rather than just downhill. So that's kind of ticked that box for me, I think. Yeah, well, that was 2013. It was the yeah. first ever, well, ED, EWS, it was yeah. called back then. Um, first ever time. So people weren't really that clued up on enduro uh, for in the mainstream, no. I would say. Um, how do you think the bikes have developed since then? Because that's 10 years ago now, and we're looking at your prototype Remedy in a 29er with a triple chain ring yeah. on it. Yeah. <laughs> Two, right. like, uh, what was it, three by nine or yeah, something? Yeah, I held on to that thing for a while. Yeah. And I was like, no, who needs to have And then double chain <laughs> I had for a long time too. I think even when yeah. I finished racing in 2016, I still had a double chain set. Yeah, which was... everyone had moved over to one bike. Yeah. So why were you being all I still... retro on that? I still love to pedal my bike and since when I transitioned from enduro, I, the reason I wanted to do enduro was because I wanted to ride my bike more. I was fed up of, you know, just doing one downhill track and not going exploring all these amazing trails everywhere we went. And I still, even now I guess things have changed a lot with, you know, how things have changed with gearing, but I still felt like if it was, I wanted to be able to ride my bike and if it was that steep, I wanted to still be able to pedal. You know, eventually a lot of the stuff people just got off and pushed as soon as it got too steep. Whereas with my gears, I could actually pedal most stuff, which I feel is way more efficient. Mm. I just feel like I'm, I'm happier pedaling than pushing. Um, and I also felt there's also an advantage at the other end of the spectrum, having a big ring, and I always started every stage in my big ring. It was like this mental kind of thing that I was going to push that hard, and right. I would sit and drive the gears and really, I think that was probably one of my strengths at that time, was I probably was one of the fitter of the Enduro riders, definitely not the case now, but that was now looking back. And I think having that big ring made me almost feel like, right, I've got to, I've got to push this gear. Yeah. So that was the reason for it. I felt like I, was, I had an advantage. Um, didn't drop chains very often at all, didn't have issues like that. I just felt like I had such a good gear range. I could really ride my bike all day and go super fast. Mm. So going back a decade without making you feel too terribly yeah. old. <laughs> The, uh, you had your sort of decade in downhill, racing at the top level, yeah. You so many World Cup wins, yeah. winning that World Championship as well. Was there much of a change in technology for downhill bikes at that time? Going from Kona to Trek Session, I guess the wheel yeah. size was always 26, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. I think it was more just the weight of right. frames and components. Um, you know, the days of the... Um, Monster T, I think I'm right in saying, or Mr. T with the Marzocchi forks that are mm. the those huge yeah, heavy things. No, not quite. Not quite. <laughs> but then to you just uh, stuff becoming lighter weight, bikes becoming more agile, geometry changed hugely, um, suspension obviously in terms of you know the, the weight also, but how the suspension worked, going to coil shocks, air shocks, having that variety, um, and brakes. I think that was another big thing. I think mm. the whole advent of the disc brake and their technology that that's grown into and how powerful they are now and how well they work. Um, so I think, yeah, that it wasn't a huge in terms of wheel size, it was more just that the geometry changes and the angles, um, suspension working and the weight meant that those bikes were so much more agile. You were mm -hmm. not just a passenger basically piloting this monster down a hill, you were able to you know maneuver and jump and skip around and be agile on the bike. So. Yeah, good point. Yeah, lots went on. So is there anything, any kind of bike tech out there that you think was a real game changer? Like, I hate to use the word or the phrase, but is there something that you think, oh, that's really yeah, I made think, a big difference? Do you know what I think it is? I think it's a dropper seat post. Oh, really? I, I really do. I think that was, that changed for, for the general trail rider. Mm. Like, to be able to, I actually rode with someone the other day who hadn't got a drop on their bike, and I kind of forgot how... <laughs> yeah. And I said, right, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not going to my seat down for this section. And I was like, no, I am. Because it suddenly realised, like, I spent the whole time with my saddle on my on my belly. Yeah, you just literally like that with a saddle in your stomach. Yeah. Um, and it made me really realise, I was like, I just take it for granted now yeah. that you put your seat down. You, mm. And it suddenly makes everything the downhill seem so much more, well, less mm. daunting. And even just when you come to a stop at the traffic lights or you come to the top of the trail, you just, you put yeah. your seat down and you put your feet down. You haven't got that kind of, like, teetering over thing. Yeah. And I think for beginners and for confidence inspiring, it's... That has been incredible, I think, more mm. than anything, to be honest. Even on cross country, so I used to race cross country, yep. and I went back to a hardtail the other day with a rigid post, yep. and I realised I used all different muscles to sort of descend with this sort of tippy yeah, toe yeah, motion yeah. to keep you're like the saddle out of the way. Yeah, you're here, <laughs> like you're perched on tiptoes in a way. Instead of down. Yeah, yeah you're absolutely right. I think for me that was an amazing thing, and I think now it's, yeah, to see it across all disciplines 
mm. pretty much. Even they've tried it on the road, haven't they? They've even tried it in cyclocross. So I know, who right? knows? We'll see. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. And guys, send your love down in the comments below. Uh, and if you want to reminisce on one of Tracy's amazing bikes, then let us know which was your favourite down below. Gee! Wasn't Tracy Mosley good? So She's interesting. She's great. Legend. I love her. She's brilliant. Uh, so first off in the news is that new flight attendant. So we've obviously seen prototypes under the likes of Nino Scherter over the last year, and it's finally been released. Uh, so anyone who wanted that automatic suspension system on their XE or downcountry bikes, you can now have it. Uh, so basically, there's been some damper updates, but you can now have it on a SID and a SID SL, and also the SID Lux, the new rear shock. So it has this three position compression damper system, easy for you to say, yeah. not me, um, that automatically switches between effectively what is a locked out position, a pro pedal or a supportive pedaling position and an open position and it will automatically switch between the three by reading the terrain and reading the rider and choosing for you. So you can have this in the SID SL which is their 100mm or their 110mm forks uh, which is just shy of 1500 grams and will cost you £1,339 Although do bear in mind that all these systems need to be compatible with particular bikes, so you might have to buy this as a, an off-the-shelf bike, not... Yeah, as a package, yeah, no, yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Especially um, on the rear shock. Yeah. yeah, and you can get it in the SID, normal SID, which is 120 mils as well, and that would be £1,429. And you also get it in the SID Lux, uh, which is their rear shock. Um, so some of the bikes that will be coming out with this system for you to buy uh, will be the Canyon Lux, the Orbea Oise, uh, the Pivot Max, Santa Cruz Blur, and the Specialized Epic Evo as well. So if that interests you, keep an eye out on their websites. Exciting stuff. Uh, similar kind of cross-country vibe of uh, pedal to the metal. We've got new pedals from Look. Uh, the pedal itself is not new new, but it's got a power meter, which is obviously very, very exciting if you're a cross-country racer and you need to train by power. I'm being kind of a bit mean about cross-country races looking at power, but it is essential. Heart rate's not as good as <laughs> measuring power. Um, Look have been making pedals for a long time uh, and they're, they're made in France still, which is pretty good. Um, so, yeah, 404 grams for the pair, so which is really impressive mm. for a set of power cranks. Um, so it's SPD compatible, Bluetooth and AMP Plus for your computer or head unit compatibility. Uh, with a 60 hour battery life, I guess that's probably just normal week of cross country training really, isn't it? Yeah. 60 hours of pedaling. Um, you can get a single pedal, so you'll still have uh, balanced power effectively because you'll just be measuring it on one side, but it'll, it'll work it out for 750 euros. Uh, but you can get the Jewel for maximum uh, ultra precise measurement of your watts for just over a thousand euros. So yeah. not cheap, but probably very, very good. And the dual allows you to sort of measure rider imbalances between ah. left and right as well. Those are all imported data notes. Yeah, no, that is very useful. Um, so DVA are looking for investors. Uh, so basically they need a million pounds to start up their next ventures. Um, so if you've got a spare 10 grand, you might want to pop it in uh, to DVA and get the ball rolling. But they've already secured half a million. So what I'm about to tell you uh, is stuff that is going to go ahead. They just need a little extra cash for it. But I find it quite exciting because they're going to be developing an ENTB range, which you may not be excited about, but it's potentially going to be the the first high pivot e-bike maybe i'm speculating they haven't said this but seeing as high pivot is their vibe i'm thinking that's what's going to be new and they'll also be pushing the development of what they're now calling the thailander so we did show you that titanium prototype of a high pivot downcountry bike um, and the whole thing is not a gimmick it's more of an exercise in sustainable materials i'm wondering if they can bring it to the uk and produce titanium frames for the same price as a carbon frame, so as an alternative to carbon. Um, and they're also wanting to bring all production to Scotland. So yeah, like I said, if you've got a spare 10 grand, you might want to give it... I'll just check. I yeah, think I might have lost that down the back of the back sofa. To yeah. <laughs> That's for Christmas bonus. Don't like to boast. <laughs> it's not. Genuinely no. <laughs> not. Just for clarification there. Feeling a bit tired now. Which is handy because we've got some new Michelin Enduro tyres. Um, so three tread patterns are added, uh, a new dual ply 55 TPI construction for more strength, more support, um, 
a new iteration of their Magic X compound, so better grip in damp and cold conditions. That's really cool, cold and damp specific. Mm. Um, yeah, that, I mean, it's well, very niche, I, but that'd be great here in the UK. Well, not just yeah. in the UK, but Scandinavia, the, the North America. The quality would sort of change under yeah, the Yeah, yeah, under the properties, yeah. So yeah. And I, I, yeah, you could notice that at World Cups where we'd go to Fort William, where it was always cold. And, oh, yeah. and it was about three to ten degrees even in the summer. And then you go to somewhere like Wyndham where it was really hot yeah. and everything would be a bit even softer and a bit squidgier. Um ten percent lighter as well and promising for those pedal and watt counters, thirty watts. That's crazy if that's, that's, that's true. That's really impressive. That's big if that's true. Uh, so yeah, they've got a mixed soft condition and a mixed hard condition. So another interesting another tire brand that's going down this kind of not sort of like terrain specific but more condition specific mm. which is quite interesting so front and rear options as well and ooh different sidewall graphics as well always exciting ooh okay 80 quid <laughs> all tyres are that now you can't Not moan at that but pretty much anyway but it's interesting to see Michelin go into the option of darker sort of non yellow and blue logos yes yeah going to appeal to some people. Um, so over at Rocky Mountain, they have revamped their Instinct. So this is their 140 rear, 150 front trail bike. It's a 29er only, but if you are small or extra small, you will get 27.5 front and rear. If you choose, you can choose a 29er. Um, and you have a lot of adjustment on this bike. So you've got a two position axle um, in the rear, so you can adjust 10 mils of rear center. You can also have um, headset and reach adjustment by five mil plus or minus. And there's also a four position flip chip in the shock as well. So you've got four different um, points to adjust your geometry uh, according to how you fancy it. And they're also doing size-specific suspension tunes as well. Ah, uh, Rocky Mountain is really interesting, and they're doing all this size-specific thing. It feels like lots of brands are getting to a point where we can't get any slacker for you know given bikes and given segments because we don't want too much slackness. And also, we're getting you know as steep as we can do on seat angles. So it feels like the next movement mm, for I... bikes is probably this, like yeah, size-specific sizing. Yeah. Which sounds really stupid as I've said it twice. And but yeah. I, I think I brought it up in a, a predictions video about two yeah. years ago where we were talking about how I think bikes are just going to be fully adjustable. Oh, because wow. Because then okay. you can just have whatever head, uh, head angle, whatever reach you want. And if it's not right and you've put all your money in this bike, you can go, yeah. well, you know what, I'll just change it. Yeah. It's fine and play around with it. Um, in other news, Commensal are releasing some casual clothing lines. Fancy some hats, tees, hoodies. With Kamenkiel on. Yeah, yes, that'd be great. Then you can have them. Um, and also, what do you think about this, Owen? Oh, Fazari have just rebranded to Ari. Just, and then we've seen it on Instagram. Don't know what this means for their bikes, um, but they've hired Rachel and Kyle Strait um, on the team members. And Instagram is now Ari, not Fazari. Yeah, I mean, I've not, I've, I've seen the, the bikes a lot. They've had some really good reviews over the sort of like across the pond. Less, we haven't had them here yet as much. I haven't seen as many. They probably are here, but I think they're, they're going to be quite good. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, Ari for me just reminds me of Ari Vatina, famous Finnish rally driver. So I think it's kind of cool. Scandi flicks, all that stuff. <laughs> Finnish flick. Good, good brand association. Also exciting in the news and car related. Seamless transition there. Uh, is a tailgate pad, which wow. obviously is super cool here in the UK. If you've got your, your little no fan. No one drives trucks here, but you guys in the States are going to love this. Yeah, so this is a Fox. Is it specific just for Fox? It won't work with Rock Shocks? No, it is. It's just Fox branded. Ah, okay, but Hence ah. why they brought out a race face version. Oh. If that upsets you a little Perfect. bit, uh, you can have a race face version. Oh, very good. Oh, talking about transitions, <clears throat> there is an updated transition spur as well. New colours, new specs, and exciting UDH compatible. <laughs> no, it is. I think it's I really good, it whether you I like T-type or not. I'm just still enjoying on the fence. your transitions, if you can come oh, up with Oh, there you go, back That's with another right. transition. Genius. Thank you very much. Uh, last yeah. week, we asked a question. I wasn't here, but Blake stepped into my shoes, or sat on my seat, something like that. Uh, Norco was founded in 1964, and the rail was their first in-house branded bicycle released two years later. But what style of bike was it? Did Blake know? He did, oh, he did guess. 
Oh, no, right. I Fair play. He was close, but he didn't actually get the gold. Um, it was indeed a cruiser. Uh, I said it was in the 60s. That should have given you a clue. Oh, yeah, but it was basically a 20-inch wheeled cruiser with only three-speed gearing and a sissy bar. Whatever. Is that like a wheelie bar? Yes, yeah, like a... Yeah. Or is it a big, There's a couple okay. of people, so all the winners are on the screen right now. There's well a couple done. of people who did say choppers, and I'm going to give it to you, uh, give that uh, the uh, credit to you for that. Um, and yeah, what's interesting about the cruiser is back then, uh, although they started in 69 with this cruiser, well, they started importing some stuff and then they decided to make it their own. Um, and at the start, it was just North Cycle Industries. And oh. that's what those bikes would have been branded at. And a couple of years later, they started bringing out other bikes and shortened it to Norco. So uh, it's nothing to do with the, the city in oh, California, yeah. um, also named Norco, which all also the, founded yeah. in 1969. Oh, which right. All the dairy enough. product in... Um, in Australia. Is that a Norco as well? Yeah, they've got milk, they've no. got cheese. Nice stuff. Well, this week's question is about look. So they were the key catalyst, arguably, in commercialising clipless pedals. I won't say they invented it because there's definite argument about who has. Um, but the concept that they brought to the market was derived from another piece of sporting equipment. Can you tell me what that is? I'll accept either the sport or the sporting equipment in which those clipless pedals derived. Okay, I've got a top mod for you this week, Owen. Excellent. And Severi, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, from Ulu, my pronouncing Olu. that. Olu. in Finland. You been to Finland? Well, uh, yeah, I lived there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, hey, effectively... Hey, meet the Kolo. <laughs> so, effectively, um, Severi had a Mondraker Foxy, and he bought this bash guard, but it didn't actually fit his bike, and it kept sort of, like, fouling. So he was like, well, why don't I just make it myself? And so he did. And this is it. I mean, this has got to be one of the best top mods we've had in a yeah, long time. Um, I mean, that just spent... looks professional. Not... I know, I know. It's like, he, yeah, it's, I don't know why he didn't just do this in the first place, because he's obviously good at CNC machining. Yeah. He's done some 3D modeling as well to plan it. Um, I'm really impressed. So thank you so much for that top mod. Um, yeah, very good. If someone else has a top mod, what can they do? Uh, they can send it in on the uploader. I oh, believe it's in the, uh, the the link below. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Almost like I vaguely know what I'm doing here now. <laughs> comments? Yes, comments right. time. Let's have some comments. I've got some comments. Oh, right. Go on, no, then, give me some comments. Right. Uh, Andrew. Well, we uh, were talking about high pivots on short travel bikes last week, pivots. just to remind you. Okay. On short uh, Did Blake like high pivots? He hates short travel bikes. He admitted right. it. He Live hates short travel. Right, live, okay. I mean, I don't know what short is for Blake, but yeah. <laughs> I know what short is for me, but there we go. He's taller um, than us. Yeah, I know. Yeah, quite a bit Surprising. taller, but yeah. Um, cool. Andrew has a comment here. Uh, innovation. Okay, we solved a problem nobody had, uh, just so we can make you think that bike is, uh, your bike is outdated and sell you a new bike Ooh, that you don't need. Uh, I, dis there. I disagree there, to be honest. Does that means I all think... new tech is designed just to make you think that your existing tech is Agree, and, uh, and unfortunately there is some new tech where it is a bit of a head scratch of like, Ooh, how, is, how are we moving that forward? But high pivots, I think, yeah, it's not, yeah, the wheel's you, moving you in the right like direction. You don't like it, you don't have to have it. There's still some yeah, you don't have good to buy it, single exactly. speeds and some single speeds. Well, you can do that too. Pivot, I mean, yeah. well, high pivots. Anyway, uh, Gallen Keller says, high pivot everything. Uh, why wouldn't you want the wheel to travel in the right direction? Exactly. This guy yeah. is all about the high pivot. Well, the fork's moving kind of in line with the bump, so you may as well make the back wheel do it. Logic. Good point. Uh, Duncan Urquhart, I'm going to say. Well, I'll struggle on that. Sorry for butchering your Urquhart. surname. Uh, just remove the chain guard because it was getting clogged with mud and twigs and causing all sorts of chain trouble. Uh, I can't, uh, can't see a high pivot with standing UK mud uh, and it can't be removed. Uh, well, you say that, but DV8 was founded in Scotland. So yeah, and <laughs> also I feel like... know anything like about mud. The original designers who worked on the forbidden stuff is based in Northern Ireland, a place not known to be dry or dusty. No, so, and aren't they out of Washington as well? Yeah, also like known Seattle, to be quite wet. The wet. Like, yeah, lonely. Yeah, rainy city. But you're right, it is an extra thing that we'll moves see. on your bike, so you could be right. Maybe you'd have to buy one and let us know. Um, and finally here, uh, David Geiger just says, I see what Blake thinks. I mean, that's just terrifying. It would be quite you terrifying. you see what he thinks. He thinks every jump is basically flippable. Really? Yeah, anything. Yeah. He, he actually said once that he could flip any bike. 
I think he probably can. There's a video in that. Yeah. Um, so what we're looking forward to this week is how to choose the right pedals on Sunday. So if you are not sure what pedals you want or you want to know the ins and outs of clipless and flats and compatibilities with shoes, then tune into that because it's really in depth. Um, and hopefully that is helpful to you. But for now, that's all we've got time for. Aww. It's okay. Is it? I might get over my cold. I'll I be good then. So. Be fine. Yeah, let us know down in the comments below. What did you think of Tracy Mosley's bikes? And uh, is there any that brought back some sort of gold memories for you?